Happy Halloween and welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. Ahoy y'all, happy Halloween, celebrate safely. I'm dressed up the same as I was last week as a big old maple geek. Thanks for being part of the Maple Mafia. Today is Halloween and it's the Tenant 10 for October 31st of 2023. We got a great lineup for you today. So guys, open house is coming up in just a few days, November 4th, you're gonna wanna be here. We're gonna have Japanese maples everywhere. You're gonna have tree geeks everywhere. So get excited. Guys, there's nothing like a Mr. Maple open house and this is the last one of 2023. You're gonna wanna be there November 4th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The next guaranteed one's Memorial Day after that of 2024, so it might be a while. We did throw a march in there last year. No guarantees we'll be able to do it again this year. Our next planned for sure one is Memorial Day after this of 2024. We'd love to see you for one more banger here in 2023. It's gonna be a blowout of an open house. All right, so let's get started. What we're doing today is we're talking about 10 trees that are getting listed on mrmaple.com at 10 a.m. There's 10 more, check your email. All right, let's see, what's this Makawa type? Let's, let's, uh, let's put that around back, man. Let's oh. talk about that at the end. We'll skip that one for now. Skip it. What else you got over there? Well, I guess we'll start with this one. All right, we got Acer Japonicum Taki no Gawa. Y'all, Taki no Gawa is a Japonicum with some good sized foliage and some really nice yellows, oranges, and reds in the fall. I like this one. I, I say it a lot and I don't say it to discredit this one, but it reminds me about the, of the wild uh, Acer Japonicums I saw in the mountains in Japan. And that's a good thing. I think it's really cool. It reminds me a lot of what I saw there. This is a specific selection. Taki no Gawa, kind of medium on the leaf size. Great oranges, reds, and yellows on the fall color. And a great grower too. It's kind of in that mid-size, 10 to 12 foot in a 15 year period. Really excellent for an Acer Japonicum. Very crisp foliage to it. Makes it kind of a, a almost cartoon character of an Acer Japonicum. It's like a kid drew a picture of what they think a Japonicum leaf looks like. You get a Taki Nagawa. Hey guys, this is one of the first time we've offered them in a size other than a one gallon for Taki Nagawa. Some good size two gallons right now. Take advantage of this. Japonicum's one of my, one of my favorite species of when it comes to maples. And they've got thicker leaves. That means they typically hold on their fall color a little longer. They're very consistent on their fall color. And this is a tree that just makes a good medium-sized tree in the landscape, and it's gonna rock it out. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll go as a Japanese maple for Halloween tonight. Man, if a kid shows up at my door dressed up as a Japanese maple, I'm breaking the bank on that candy. That, you're getting the whole bucket. Your friend that's a ghost, I'm like, sorry, buddy. Japanese maple got all the candy. Talk to that guy, he's a winner. <laughs> So guys, next up, we've got some one gallons of Acer Palmatum Geisha. We bring Geisha gone wild, wild a lot. We got the OG original Acer Palmatum Geisha. Guys, this one is a soft pink. One of the most bright pink trees in the entire nursery industry. Also a completely different shape if you're used to Geisha gone wild. This one's more of a small ball-like shape, four to five feet tall, four to five feet wide. Give this one some late day shade. It doesn't want full sun, especially in hotter zones. Still gonna work zones five through nine, protect it from the sun in those hotter areas. I know I fell in love with this plant when we first visited Buckholtz Nursery. He had one in a box there in one of the greenhouses and I would just walk up to it and I was like, what in the world is this? It was a baby pink. I mean, it's a baby pink late in the season in October. Right now, we're in October here and guess what guys? Really nice pink colors. It's one, make sure to give it good drainage, some protection from the hot afternoon sun. But this pink color on this, it's unreal. It's one of the most pink Japanese maples you can have. It's almost like a pink floating cloud. It's almost like a pink dwarf ukigumo. Outstanding plant. If you don't have the original geisha, I highly recommend it. Great for a container garden. Great for a shade garden to put that splash of color in there. You can get some early morning sun and protect it from that 3 p.m. on heavier sun of the day. One of my favorite pinks of all time. All right, what do we got next? We've got Magnolia Kiki's Broom. Hey, shout out to my niece, Emma. There was some rap song that had Kiki in it and she said, she was trying to get my kids to call her Kiki because it was cool. And I said, we're not doing that. From now on, my kids are calling you Polecat. So shout out to my niece, Polecat. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a cool Magnolia that gets two, three feet tall, three, four foot wide. It stays really low, still has good blooms to it, which is really unusual for brooms and uh, bloom, brooms in Magnolia. blooms. It, it, it has blooms on brooms. That's the crazy thing about this one. It's a broom and it has plenty of bro uh, blooms as well. An awesome tree, really small, compact, dense magnolia for your garden. I remember bringing Hank Van Campen and Piet Vergelt to visit and we went over and we toured Dr. Criticos' garden and he'd gotten one of these from Buckles. Talon sent him one of these as a gift and they were freaking out. They were like, can I please get some sign wood on this? 
you know when you got big time nurserymen like that and they're so drawn to this you know you got a good plant well tim and i were like hey we need to get some of these grafted by graft them you can get a superior plant to that nice compact dense small habit to it incredible flowers we don't offer a lot of magnolias this is one of our first toes in the water starting out with a boom here though guys this is an incredible magnolia you'll definitely want to add to your collection and it is a deciduous magnolia so this one does drop its leaves during the winter don't worry about that it will leap back out in the spring shout out to you polecat now check out the sizes on these wells pot ojishi Woo, guys now a lot of you've been looking for that uh that whole shishi gashira lion's head family we're still working on the majishi it'll be coming eventually but we're bringing back the ojishi that's actually the male lion much flatter foliage on this one perfect pairing to shishi gashira a little smaller growing than shishi gashira so a little flatter and a little denser really cool plant to have and this is about a three-year size on ojishi often two-year sizes are about in here so it's a real slow grower some excellent time to pick up a welsh pot on these because these are some giant welsh pots ojishi it's an amazing plant really unique and different because it's got that flatter foliage if you collect that shishi gashira family you got to have the ojishi yeah especially if you love bonsai for shishi gashira you know get a male line and put it with it it's going to have similar fall color but flatter overall stance slower growing so it might even lend itself even a little bit better for bonsai incredible plant ace of palmatum ojishi the male lion all right here's a weirdo you talking about me or the plant <laughs> we, got, we did a weirdo series and we talked about weirdo maples guys check out purple curl this one is always a fan favorite purple curl is a unique tree because it has a purple red kind of color to the foliage but then it gets this orange red sort of unique malting across the foliage and the leaf twists as well give me that purple curl name really unusual and different definitely a japanese maple weirdo if you're a collector this is a plant only a collector could love because this plant is amazing guys this is another talon buckholz introduction you're seeing a theme here we've been doing a ton of talon products because we're going to be beefing up the entire floor wonder collection there at buckholz nursery and you guys are going to be getting some of the premium stuff first here on mr maple uh this one is a fan favorite don't sleep on it today if you're thinking about purple curl i would check out fast we've sold out of these pretty quickly in the past it is incredibly unique it just makes some really weird growth habits to it i love when it kind of has that yellow patches over top of the purple everything just gets super irregular on this one uh, we actually bought the original from them back in the day and shipped it here to the nursery maybe we'll get it back out to the buckhold nursery now my goal is to have every tree he introduced there on the grounds purple curl man what a funky plant guys perfect pairing with magic moon kind of a fun one to pair it with there a lot of people talking about doing that acer palmatum purple curl get it today make it your weirdo for halloween oh man what we got here tim guys we're bringing back some high grafts some lollipops on picea orientalis tom thumb now these are high grafts sometimes you got to shave their legs a little bit they get a little hairy down here so make sure to shave the legs if you see that going on we love putting these on a standard because they're a compact dense uh small tree and that standard just really accentuates that shows it off and we often refer to conifers on a standard and that's just kind of how they're done sometimes this one i think it actually elevates the plant and makes it a superior overall plant having it on that standard yeah this was if, if you're familiar with the cultivar skylands this was a witch's broom that was found on the cultivar skylands dense compact and tom thumb just that small little uh habit to it it was actually found and introduced by tom thumb nursery a uh, really cool plant and it's just an awesome yellow conifer to add that yellow interest in your winter garden now give this one more sun the parts that are getting more splashes of sunlight will be the most yellow if it's in heavy shade you'll get a little bit more green that overall shape is amazing typically around three feet by three feet wide even in 10 years so very compact it's a showstopper and i think the standard is the perfect way of growing this when you get that elevated look to it and it's just a fun way of having it you can pair this out in the garden with some different japanese maples and it'll really brighten up a spot what do we got here tim guys we got camas sipper subtusa chairman chairman always a fan favorite guys we do a lot of it there's a big one going into hillstone arboretum if you've ever been here and toured my, my parents place or my uncle glenn's place we plant this one a lot we've got a giant one right as you go in the rock wall there awesome tree gives you those blue green uh colorations on that evergreen dwarf conifer 
and it really stands out, especially in the winter garden. What I like most about this isn't just the color, it's the unique texture this provides because you have these little cathedrals that come off of this upright evergreen. And it's slow growing, great for uh, fairy gardens, railroad gardens. They've got some at the railroad garden at the North Carolina Arboretum in Asheville. But it's just unique in its texture, its color. It's an all around awesome plant. Great size of these right now. These are in our Welsh pots. Every bit the size of our ones when we list them. Actually, probably a little bigger than the last time we had it. Don't sleep on these. They will sell out. I have a lot of people signed up for when these come back in stock. That's Camiciparus obtusa, Chairman. We're bringing it conifer heavy today, man. Guys, we're bringing Pinus Wallachiniana Frosty. Oh, this thing is fun, guys. It's got that splash of white in it, especially in the spring garden. This one, I, mean, I like the, the Pinus Wallachiniana too. They're very heat tolerant. They're very durable. This one, I, it just has everything you want in a showy, variegated pine. It gets that frosted variegation where it gets the name Frosty. Get about six to eight foot tall, four or five foot wide in 10 years. Love the variegated pines. They give a unique interest out there in the landscape. Love the Wallachiniana though, because they've got such long needles. It really adds something. And the longer needles give a little bit longer needle to display that variegation. Yeah, dip, dip a fry in this Frosty, you'll love it. All right, what we got here, man? We got Acer Campestra Carnival in two gallons. Oh man, you guys been waiting. We've had some open houses. We've had some big boys in these. We've had some 10 gallons. Our online customers keep salivating. They keep saying, I see you shooting those top fives. What's in the back? Every top five, what's in the back? It's been carnival, y'all. We're bringing it in two gallons on a shippable size. European field maple, one of the showiest variegated whites you can get in the garden. Acer Campestra at Carnival. Jump on these today. It's a plant that can give you a little bit of yellow fall color. Campestra is not really known for the fall color. What this one's really known for is that white spring and summer color. The tree will look like a complete white ball out in the landscape. Use this tree to add color. Give it some sunlight though, because Acer Campestra Carnival is a tree that prefers sunlight and hotter zones, you may have to give it some late afternoon shade because it's so variegated. Don't be afraid if you're like, we're in zone 6B and I put this one in all shade and it just didn't do anything. The one I put in sun vastly outperformed it. Uh, surprisingly does like a lot of sun. Unique leaf to this one too. You get that Acer Campester look to it. Just really stands out, a collector's dream. And like Tim said, it gets about as wide as it does tall. So it's gonna get more of a ball shape overall. Awesome plant. All right, ready to close out? I think we had one more back here, y'all. Uh, let's bring out these big boy Japanese princesses fresh out of the Buckholtz farm, y'all. We got some two gallon Japanese princess. Japanese princess, one of our favorite selections by Talon Buckholtz. This tree leaves out in the spring as a bright pink, has that Makawa-like habit with a little bit of twist of the foliage. Uh, you, you know about this one, guys. The early spring color, bright pink. If you're giving it full sun, you can even get some hot pink shades on this one. If you put it in some shade, you're going to be a soft pink with kind of some blonde highlights going on. This one is one of the dwarfer of the Makawa forms, typically get around three feet, even in 10 years. I like it for its denser foliage too. It really, you don't see into this one very much at all. It's a long, thick leaf, and it just stands out even amongst Makawa variants. I like it because the texture is different because of that leaf twist. I mean, that's a clear indicator and a way to dis distinguish it, even if it didn't have a label on it, what Japanese princess is. It's an amazing plant for me. It's one of the best of the Makawa selections, and it's really cool too. I mean, I've seen some of the older ones can even get a little bit of pine bark on it as it ages. Guys, you're always asking for bigger sizes. Well, here they are. These are a great size, two gallon, give you a little bit more instant gratification on these. They are slow growing, excellent sizes. I mean, these are fresh from the Buckholtz farm, grafted from some of the very first ever Japanese princess there at that location, and we're bringing them to you, mail order here today on Halloween. So guys, that was 10 of the 20 trees getting listed. Jump on at 10 a.m., check out fast. Our website doesn't hold it for you until you complete that checkout process. Hey, I won't judge you if when the kids show up at the door, if you ask them maple-related questions, and then the ones that can answer those, give them more candy than the others. Just, just help those guys out. They're the future horticulturalists of America. If the kid doesn't know what an Acer japonicum is, slam that door. They're gonna go back home, their parents are gonna give them candy. <laughs> and guys, our open house, November 4th, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., be there. We're going to have cool plants and cool people. Yeah, know your trees, kids. Take care. God bless and have a great day. Mm -hmm.